Hello, I'm recording a video on how to do the finishing work on the Essential Cardigan, which is by Kira K Designs, which is me. So we're going to go through the finishing work in the order that it's written in the pattern, which is going to be grafting, then sewing the back of the neckline, and then sewing the underarm seams, and then tucking in the yarn ends. I'm going to start with grafting. And this is grafting on a knit one, purl one rib with a selvage stitch, which is a little bit tricky, but doable. I've left a long tail. I've actually left two long tails. This one will be used for sewing. This one will be used for both grafting and sewing. So I'm going to thread this up on my darning needle. And I'll say, you could graft this as if it's stockinette, and it would be just fine. The difference would be that um, you would see the uh, grafting line on the inside back of the neck. The way I'm going to do it here, it's going to be invisible. So my yarn's attached to the back needle, which means I'm going to start on the front needle, and we start with a couple of edge stitches because of this selvage at the beginning. So I'm going to pass my darning needle purlwise through the front stitch, leaving it on my knitting needle, and pull it through. Then I'm going to go to the back needle. Here I'm going to pass my darning needle knitwise through that first stitch, leaving it on the knitting needle, pulling it through. One more set up here to the front needle. I'm going to go in knitwise, slipping the stitch to the darning needle, and then purlwise, keeping that one on, pulling through. Now we go into our repeat. I'm going to the back needle. I'm going to go in purlwise, take a stitch off, and then purlwise, keeping this stitch on, and pull it through. The second stitch always stays on. The first one comes off, and whether you do it knitwise or purlwise depends on what it is in the rib. So now we're back to the front needle. I'm going to go in knitwise, take it off, knitwise through the next one, keeping it on, pull it through. Now I always wait to pull it through till I've done both steps on the needle so I can't forget to have done one or the other. Now I'm going to the back needle. I'm going to go in knitwise, taking that stitch off, knitwise, keeping the next stitch on, pull it through. Front needle here, we're going to go in purlwise. Take it off, purlwise to the next one, keep it on, pull it through. Back needle, purlwise off, purlwise on, pull it through. So except for that setup, we're doing the same thing on each needle, or up to each stitch on the needle when we go, but we alternate knits and purls. So front needle, knit off, knit on, pull it through. Back needle, same thing, knit off, knit on, pull it through. Now in terms of tension, you want this to end up looking pretty seamless, so you might need to give it a little tug, but not as tight as physically possible. There's a balance in there. So front needle, purlwise off, purlwise on, pull it through. Back needle, same thing, purlwise off, purlwise on, pull it through. Front needle, knit off, knit on, pull through. Back needle, same thing, knit off, knit on, pull it through. Oops, careful that your yarn doesn't get tangled on your needle, it likes to do that. Front needle here, purlwise take it off, purlwise keep it on, pull it through. Back needle, purlwise off, purlwise on, pull it through. Front needle, knit off, knit on, pull it through. Back needle, knit off, Knit on, pull it through. Front needle, purl off, purl on, pull it through. Back needle, purl off, purl on, pull it through. Just a few more to go here. Front needle, knit off, knit on, pull it through. Back needle, knit off, knit on, pull it through. Front needle, Purl off, purl on, pull it through. Back needle, purl off, pull it on, pull it through. Front needle, knit off, knit on, pull it through. Back needle, knit off, knit on, pull it through. Got my yarn caught again. Front needle, knit off, knit on, Pull it through. And back needle. Knit off. 
turn it on, pull it through. Now I'm down to just one stitch on each needle, so I can only do step one. So the front needle, I'm going to go purl, take it off, back needle, purl, take it off, and then I'm going to pull those through. I want to be gentle here, resist the urge to yank. I say that a lot when I'm teaching. People like to pull things tight, but we don't want to stretch things out here. So you can see here, my ribbed grafting, basically I've sewn a row of knitting that's joined the two. It's not perfectly seamless because these were knit in opposite directions and met here, but it's pretty darn close and it looks good on the inside as well as the outside. Now I'm going to transition into sewing up the back of the neck and I have two pieces of yarn here in the center, which is nice because I can use one to go up and one to go down or left, right, I suppose. So I'm going to find the center line just really easily by folding my back neck bind off in half. I'm not going to count or be super specific about it because honestly, if you're a stitch or two off, it doesn't matter. And then keeping with the same yarn that's attached, I'm going to come up from the wrong side to the right side on the sweater back, just right under the bound off edge there. And on the neck ribbing, I'm going to come up wrong side to right side, one stitch in from the edge. I like to do one stitch selvage. And now we're going to get into our repeat. On the sweater side, I'm going to go in where my sewing yarn came out, keep my needle parallel to the edge, and come out one stitch farther. There's two strands of yarn here, although they're a little scrunched together. If you separate them, you can see. This is a mattress stitch, or it's also called invisible stitch. You can pull it pretty snug as you go, or you can snug it up every once in a while. Now, same thing over here. I'm going to go in where I came out. My needle stays parallel to the edge, and here I'm catching a bar, so it's just a single strand of yarn. Back to the sweater side, I'm going to go in where I came out, my needle stays parallel to the edge, and I catch two strands. Now, if you notice here, these two that are very close to each other, that's what I like to get, that's the bind off row. You could get this V here, it's a lot easier to see, but you'll get a larger, thicker seam allowance on the inside. So I like to go for the sneaky guy at the top, that is the row on which you bound off. And then we repeat, so over here to the band, one stitch in from the edge, there's this little channel here. And I'm going to catch my bar, there it is, and pull it through. So that's the basic idea of this, but it gets just a little tricky because knitted stitches are not square, so I don't want to catch one row on this side for every one stitch on the sweater. So you could put little clips every so often. I prefer if it's short like this just to check in with myself and to know that I'll probably have to catch two rows on the band side every so often. So back here, one V or two strands. And this time I'm still gonna go in where I came out, still stays parallel to the edge, but I'm gonna catch two bars. They're a little jumbled up there. And back here, one V. So you'll notice I'm not poking my needle down all the way to the other side of the work. I'm not like sewing down and then sewing up again. I'm just kind of skimming or scooping. That'll keep you out of trouble if you try to keep that motion where your needle stays on the right side. Now I've sewn about an inch or so, I like to pull it snug, and you'll see this is kind of going to zip together as my sewing yarn becomes a straight line, and it gives you a really nice seam. Then if it's hard to see where you came at, you can just give it a little tug to open it up again. So there's my V on the sweater side. And this is going to start getting just a little squirrely in here as I get to my cable, but if you're careful, you can still find that line of us between your stitches that you need to catch. And honestly, if you're not super careful, it will probably be fine because you're stitching something that's in the midst of a cable. There's already a lot going on there anyway. And this is the back of the neck. So even if it's not perfect, you personally won't see it a whole lot. <laughs> and if you have long hair, no one's really gonna see it. So I've done a little bit more and I wanna check in to see how things are going in terms of uh, squishing in or easing in the extra. So I'm going to put a little snug and see. This actually looks pretty good. I think I do need to catch two bars here every so often, but not right now because I've already done it twice. So here's where I came out. Single bar here, V over there, single bar here. Now um, for folks who are new to this, it can really be helpful to leave it a little loose. So I'm not going to pull this in here so that you can really see where you came out. Um, it gives you an extra step of having to tighten up later on. So 
honestly, in my own work, I've stopped doing that. Oh, you know, I caught the wrong one before. So here's how you back it up. You take out your needle, find that sewing yarn, and just pull it back. I got a little mixed up with the cable, which happens to everybody. And I always like to tell my students that the difference is not that I don't make mistakes, it's that they don't throw me. <laughs> uh, if they don't worry me too much, I know how to fix them, or if I can't fix them, I know how to hide them. But it's not that I don't make mistakes having done this so much. It's just that they are not a big deal. Probably because I've made so many mistakes <laughs> and I've gotten pretty good at fixing them. And I do a fair amount of fixing other people's mistakes when I teach as well. Alright, so it's about time again for a tighten and check in. So I'm going to pull this to straighten up my sewing yarn. I actually have been pulling it pretty snug as I go. Uh, and we're almost there. Looks pretty good. As much as I can, I try to keep one of my um, fingertips kind of tucked inside so I can open things up and see where it is. Eventually I won't be able to do that. But if I can manage, I like to. But you can always find a different way to get in there so you can still manipulate it from where you're able. I really like this style of seaming because it's secure. It does give you a seam allowance, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And it's really strong. And having a seam here at the back of the neck is going to help kind of support the sweater and keep it in place. So here this gets a little fiddly because we've got some stitches that um, sort of were next to each other and changed directions. Do your best. Don't worry about it too much. And you can always hide any gaps that you need to when you tuck in this yarn end, which we're going to go to in just a sec. Now I'm going to pull it tight just to make sure that I got everything sewn. And it really is, my sewing yarn is like a um, straight line here. It's really quite snug. Zipping it up and you can see why it's called invisible stitch. It's hard to see where it switches from one to the other unless you look closely and can see the directionality of the stitches. Now here I think this is all sewn up, so I'm just going to poke down to the inside of the sweater and I'm going to transition into showing you how I like to tuck in yarn ends. So I'm going to give this a little turn just so it's more comfortable for my hands. You can do it any direction you want to. I like to weave my yarn ends on a diagonal around the bias because I think that it makes them um, just a little bit less likely to come out and also you don't lose the stretchiness of your knit if you weave straight up or straight across or almost straight, you can end up with a section that doesn't have the stretch of the rest of it. So I'm going to head here just because that's where there's a lot of real estate to go into. And because I just sewed, I want to keep that tight. I'm going to do one little back stitch. So right under the yarn I just came around, I'm going to do a stitch in place. So it kind of does a loop-de-loop -loop or a circle so that my sewing can stay tight and my weaving in can stay loose. Then I'm going to start going on a diagonal here. So I'm going to catch a little bar and then a little twist. The curve needle helps to catch the next bar. I'm going to catch down, go half a V. This is a double moss stitch, so it's a little trickier than something like stockinette. But my goal here is to be at roughly a 45 degree angle, have the yarn, or sorry, the um, needle pretty covered by yarn on this side, and not have it poke through the other side, which is the most important part. I'm going to do something wrong here and show you what to keep an eye out for. So there I went down a little bit more, and you can see when I flip it over, there's a big flash of needle. That's what you want to avoid. So best thing to do is try to keep that nice angle and test it before you pull it through. So I've gone for about an inch or so. Pull that through, and then I'm going to turn and come back down right next to it. As best I can, dealing with my stitch pattern. Might not be exactly next to it, but pretty close. And again, pretty covered up here, a little less so there, so let me try that again. I'm going to maybe try on the top instead of the bottom. The switch from knit to purl sometimes will um, create a little area for your needle to pop out and show. That's better. Stockinette, you really wouldn't see it at all, but when you get into a knit purl pattern, it's a little trickier. Now here I'm going to pull just till there's no extra. I'm not going to yank because I want to make sure that this still has stretchiness both directions. So you could do a third pass if you want to. I happen to know that this is a very springy, grabby, woolly yarn, and that's going to bloom and prove up when I block, so it's going to be more solid. So I think that's plenty. Now, next I would go to sewing up the other side of 
the neckline here, but I'm going to skip that because we already did half of it. And I'm going to do an underarm real quick for you. So notice I've left a long tail of yarn. I like to do that anytime I know I'm going to seam something up just so that it's a little bit easier for me when I go to I don't have to rejoin yarn for the seaming. So here's my underarm with my hand in here. It'll be a little easier to see. Mostly I've got bound off stitches to bound off stitches, but there's a little kind of a loose area that always happens at the beginning and end where you have two stitches that used to be buddies and neighbors kind of went in separate directions and there's a little bit of a stress point. So what I like to do is start sewing before the actual seam so I can deal with any gaps at the beginning. My yarn's attached on my left, so I'm gonna come in from the inside on my right and just kind of double back a little bit. So the first thing I sew here is right where that yarn was coming from. I'm gonna catch maybe one or two bars here on the downward side. This is some row edges as we get to our bound off stitches. And there's a little transition here. This part I like to just suggest that people don't worry too much, try something, you can always take it out. Then I'm gonna pull it snug and that looks really nice and secure, it feels strong, I don't have any gaps. So then I'm ready to go into my seaming. So this is the mattress stitch or invisible stitch again. It's just what I did before except easier because this is two bound off edges. So it's like the back of the neck was, but two of those together. So I don't have to do a different thing on each side. So I'm going in where I came out, right underneath the bound off edge and catching two strands, which is a V, but um, the legs of the V might be sort of smooshed together so it might be harder to see it as a V. It might just look like two parallel lines. But if you get two strands of yarn that are pretty perpendicular to your bound off edge, you're probably doing just fine. And this is an armpit, so as long as you don't have holes, no one's gonna notice if it isn't perfect. And this is a lot easier than it looks. People tend to freak out a lot about seaming and finishing, but it's not super tricky. They're things to know. And a lot of it is that um, Try it, take it out if you need to. Um, often people just really worry about this and what they end up doing is yanking on their yarn and tying a million knots and it backfires. And just like before, every you know inch or two tighten it up. I tend to tighten it as I go just because I know where to go. But if you have trouble seeing where to go, when you pull through, leave it a little loose so you can kind of follow that path back to see where you came out last time. I'll leave it loose this time so you can see that technique. So see, so I can follow this because I know that that's my sewing yarn when it's loose. You can see it a little bit better. Now I'm going to tighten it up and here I am in the corner. And again, I've now finished sewing my bound off stitches, but I don't want to stop because there's this very naturally loose area. So I'm going to keep sewing in about that same motion that I was doing. It gets harder to see where you're going to catch because things are going in different directions. So do your best. Err on the side of sewing up a little bit more than you need to. And there you go. We're trying to avoid gaps here. And there's just a little loose spot here. So what I'm going to do when I weave in this yarn tail is I'm going to weave it in past that loose spot. Not to sew it up or cinch it tight, but more just to fill it in with yarn. So here, and again, I know this yarn, it's going to bloom and poof up when I do my blocking. So I'm going to start pretty close because I just seemed I'll do that little back stitch in place just to kind of transition from tight sewing to loose weaving in. And then I'm gonna go on my diagonal for about an inch or five or six bumps, depending on how you wanna think about it. You could check it here. I am, I've done this enough that I just feel it on the inside with my finger and I can feel that the yarn is what I'm touching, not the needle, so I know it's okay to keep going. And I'm gonna go back diagonal-ish as much as I can. I'm actually going to go and attach it into the seam allowance here just because that's where that loose spot was. And although this is enough for tucking in the yarn, I'm going to keep going for another pass just to fill in the looseness that was happening there because I want that to all get filled in. And again, I'm not pulling tight. When there's no extra yarn, I'm done. No need to yank. But that way I can um, fill in the gap so you can see them. And the beauty of this weaving in method is that because it's on the diagonal, you don't lose your stretchiness either widthwise or lengthwise. And because you've got that switchback turn where you turn right back and go 180, 
the yarn is really unlikely to work its way out. Plus it's darn near invisible on this side and totally invisible on the other side. So that is the steps to the finishing. I'm going to finish sewing up the other side of the back of the neck and the underarm. I've got a few other yarn tails to weave in. And then for my blocking process, um, I have a photo tutorial of this on my website, but I'm gonna do a wet block. So a nice gentle hand wash, and then I'm gonna lay it out flat to dry. For something like this, I'm not gonna pin it. I'm just gonna kind of pat it into place and kind of straighten up edges. If these bits at the bottom are really curling, then I might pin just those. But this isn't a project where I'm gonna block it under tension and really like stretch it and yank it. So the pattern again, is the essential cardigan. I did a cropped version of it and um, I'm gonna be writing that up soon because I really like this as a cropped sweater. Um, and it's available on Ravelry or my website and I am Kira of Kira K Designs. Thanks for tuning in.